This is Jack and the Beanstalk, a STEM story, created by Apples to Applique, read by me, Mrs. Doherty. Once upon a time, a boy named Jack lived with his mother. They were very poor and barely had enough money to buy food. One day, their cow stopped giving milk, so Jack's mother told him to go sell the cow to earn a little money. Jack walked the cow into town. On his way, he met an old man. The old man offered Jack five beans in exchange for the cow. No, said Jack. My mother told me to sell the cow for money. She would not be happy if I came home with a few beans. Ah, these aren't just any beans, the old man insisted. They are magic beans. Plant them tonight, and by morning there will be a beanstalk reaching up to the sky. He seemed in earnest, and Jack was curious. He decided to trade the cow for the beans. When Jack arrived home, he showed his mother the magic beans. His mother was furious. Without that money, we will both starve, she cried. She threw the beans out the window, then sent Jack to bed. Hey, engineers, it's time for a stop for STEM. Using materials that you have around the house, build the tallest freestanding beadstock you can. If you successfully build the beanstalk, begin reading again on page four. If you don't, it's okay. Begin reading again on page five. In the morning, Jack was surprised to see a dark shadow cast over his room, where sunlight usually spilled through the window. He went to the window to investigate and discovered, true to the old man's word, there was a giant beanstalk reaching far beyond the clouds. It looked thick and sturdy like a tree. Jack was curious about where the beanstalk led, so he began to climb it all the way to the top. In the morning, Jack was surprised to see a dark shadow cast over his room, where sunlight usually spilled through the window. He went to the window to investigate and discovered, true to the old man's word, there was a giant beanstalk reaching far beyond the clouds. However, it didn't seem sturdy. Jack approached it, gently shook it, and the beanstalk came crashing to the ground. Suddenly, a loud, booming voice could be heard asking, What was that? I'd better investigate. A moment later, a giant ladder was lowered down out of the sky. Jack was terrified and dashed for cover. He stayed hidden until he was sure that the whatever had lowered the ladder was long gone. At last, Jack peeked out from his hiding place and saw the ladder still stood next to the fallen beanstalk. His curiosity got the better of him, and he climbed the ladder all the way to the sky. Once at the top, Jack hopped down on top of a cloud. Standing not too far in front of him was a large house. The house could only belong to a giant. Jack walked to the house, amazed by the massive structure. The enormous front door was open just a crack, so Jack squeezed inside and tiptoed through the great room in which he found himself. He could hear voices coming from a nearby room, so he followed them. Peeking around the doorway, he saw a giant man and a woman sitting at the table. A goose sat on the table between them. Lay, the boomed the giant man voice, and all at once the goose laid a shiny golden egg. Jack's eyes widened. An egg of solid gold that could feed him and his mother for a month. He forgot his fear and stepped into the room, walking towards the magic goose. Suddenly, the giant man sniffed the air and boomed, fee fi fo fum Someone from down below has come. He started to look around. Jack darted behind a piece of furniture just in time. The giant woman laughed. You're always thinking someone is going to come steal from us. There's no one here. She patted his hand and rose from the table. Come, let's have some tea. The giant man still looked dubious, but at last he rose and followed her into the other room. Now is my chance, thought Jack. Quick as a flash, he climbed up onto the table and snatched the goose. The goose squawked a little as Jack climbed back down, so he patted her and whispered to her reassuringly. He ran out the door as fast as his legs could carry him and climbed back down to earth to show the goose to his mother. Jack's mother was thrilled with the goose, and so relieved to be able to buy some food with the golden eggs. She set Jack to work building a pen for the goose. It's another stop for stem time. Using materials you have around the house, construct a pen for the goose. The structure should have a roof and a door. It should also have a roost for the goose to sit on, and a way for Jack to retrieve the eggs without letting the goose escape. If the pen has a door, a roof, a roost, and a way for Jack to retrieve the eggs without opening the main door, 
go to page 9. If the pen does not have one of the elements above, it's okay. Go to page 10. Jack and his mother lived quite comfortably on the golden eggs for a while. They were no longer hungry, but Jack kept thinking about the giant home up in the clouds. He wondered what other magical things might be there. One day, Jack's curiosity got the best of him, and he decided to climb back up to the giant's house. Page 10. Jack and his mother lived quite comfortably on the golden eggs for a while. They were no longer hungry. One day, however, the goose escaped the pen. Jack knew his mother would be very upset if he didn't find the goose, so he decided to look everywhere. When he still couldn't find the goose, Jack decided to climb back up to the giant's house to look for more riches. Jack reached the giant house in the clouds and once again snuck inside. He cautiously looked around. He went from room to room looking for something special to take back home. As he neared the living room, he again heard the giants talking. He heard the giant man bellow, Sing! Then Jack heard the most beautiful music he had ever heard. He was so mesmerized that he forgot to be cautious and walked right into the living room. He saw the two giants sitting in easy chairs with gorgeous golden harp which was singing. Jack crept closer, staring at the harp as he listened to the beautiful music. When the song ended, the giant man sat up straighter and sniffed the air. fee fi fo fum Someone from down below has come! Jack darted behind a potted plant, hoping he hadn't been seen. The giant woman laughed softly. You're always thinking someone is here, ever since our goose went missing. Just relax and listen to more music. She asked the harp to sing again. As the music started, the giant man slowly started to settle back into his chair and relax. As the harp continued to sing, it wasn't long before Jack began to hear another sound. It was the sound of the giants snoring. The music had lulled them to sleep. Jack really wanted the harp, and he knew that this was his chance. As fast as he could, he ran and snatched the harp, then ran toward the door. As he ran, the harp stopped singing and yelled out, Help! At this sound, the giants both awoke and saw Jack scurrying out the door with the harp. The giants pounded after him as Jack began to run even faster back toward his home. When he reached the hole in the clouds, he stopped suddenly and looked down. There was nothing to climb down. The vibrations from the giant's pounding feet had knocked down Jack's only way home. Time for our last stop for STEM. Using materials you have around your house, build a parachute to lower Jack back down to the clouds. If the parachute successfully slows the fall of the toy you use for a Jack, go to page 14. If the parachute does not successfully slow the fall of the toy you use for Jack, that's okay. Go to page 15. This is page 14. Jack clutched the harp and jumped through the hole in the clouds with his makeshift parachute. His mother was astonished to see him sailing through the sky. When Jack safely landed, he proudly showed his mother the harp. Page 15. Jack clutched the harp and jumped through the hole in the clouds with his makeshift parachute. The chute didn't work well, and Jack was falling too quickly. His mother, who was outside hanging laundry to dry, looked up and was astonished to see him falling through the sky. She quickly stretched a sheet across the clothespins to catch Jack, who landed safely in the sheet with the harp. He proudly showed the harp to his mother. Jack was a little shaken up by his close call with the giants. He decided that from that time on, he should not barge into strange houses and take things that didn't belong to him. Jack's mother loved the harp. They were able to make a living by charging people to hear the harp sing, and they were never hungry again.